whenever a conversation around conscious consumption is put to the forefront of everything, it's almost always a reaction to a, a movement that has, you know, kind of been been growing for a while. From my lens as a designer, the movement that's been sort of going on for a while is, is kind of fast close and a lot of sort of consumption that's maybe not considered as something that should last. The whole idea behind this project is, I think, mostly to send out a signal that a big company also is aware that we all need to, to make changes. Homelessa brand is 100 years old. It's such a heritage brand in, in Denmark. So, and it's always been one of those sort of like doing projects that, you know, other major sports brands might have to consider, you know, in a different way. The way they approach, uh, like, the social consciousness, I'm immediately sort of and naturally drawn, drawn towards that. Normally when you look at clothes, you don't think about what goes into them and it looks relatively easy. And I think with this collaboration especially, it kind of makes you look at it and think, oh, actually there's a lot of different elements combined here and you start to maybe think a little bit about how is it even made. For me it was definitely the, the opportunity to, to create a project with Homo that was something they haven't looked into before, like repurposing their archives. Well, let's repurpose this, this old archive um, and old stock that we have uh, and we started looking through what's, what's actually available to us. So I sort of came up with it, some designs that I thought based on the jerseys we picked out was a good direction. And then we spent time together in, in Aarhus as well uh, with the Homo team uh, just to work out, is it really realistic? And what do we actually need to do? Who can produce this? How do we create a pattern out of five old patterns? My name is uh, Lise Clemensen and uh, I am the manager here at Sylab. Uh, at Sylab we uh, make small collections and sew up prototypes from uh, small and big companies. The process for this project started with uh, the drawing we got and then uh, we uh, make the pattern. We got a lot of boxes from, uh, from Hummel with all the old styles. Then we uh, take the styles and uh, put on the, the patterns so it uh, can be cut out and we can get into the sewing. Process. It takes uh, very long to make this process because we have to cut out every single piece of the pattern to make sure that it fits into the old styles. Uh, it's not uh, an easy way, but uh, it's the best way to do it. It's a big puzzle, <laughs> every each style. So today we had all the finished pattern pieces ready when we came in. We found out that there were some of the samples that were in really small kit styles, which meant that we had to rethink the pattern pieces, which meant that Astrid is, was still designing during this whole cutting process. The whole design process never stopped. Yeah, the challenge on some of the jerseys is obviously that there'll be a, a different graphic, there'll be a sponsor or a club sign or something, but to me it was also important that by the end of the product, you, you, you still have a clear reference to where it came from. So I think when you see the designs, it's very clear to see, you know, this patchwork of different sort of clubs and, you know, just, just different stories within one garment. And I think it was important to kind of honor some of the aesthetic that came from the original, the original garments. Seeing the, the different jerseys lined up and then seeing them in the end kind of morph into one pattern again, that, that will kind of be a highlight for me. Uh, and then when I see it again as a, as a, as a gum. So the, the collection consists of, I think, about 15 styles. 
for sure within the aesthetic that I'm comfortable with as well. Uh, I always want to reinterpret the tracksuit and the kind of comfortable wear that is attached to sportswear. Um, the inspiration for the collection, well, did actually become the archive. You know, it didn't make sense to to start anywhere else because we knew that the foundation of the project was to repurpose all these sort of archive jerseys that, that they had in stock. Um, and how can we make something that just felt more considerate? I think the thing that is relevant for people to understand from this process is the, the, the amount of time that actually goes into to committing yourself to a, to a different approach to a garment. It's almost like you have to see it to really understand um, what goes into transforming these garments and how much craftsmanship you have to apply. Um, it no longer becomes a you know, mass-produced jersey. It becomes you know, a piece of really well-considered uh, design work. So the fact that we're now creating something that people are going to feel very special about when they wear it and when they get to watch how we made them is, is really, truly amazing. I mean, the, I'm proud of the process. I'm proud of how we had a in a small way and an impact on how they perhaps think in the future about all these archive and that's such a big question mark in, in our industry that I th I'm, I'm particularly proud of having maybe put that a little bit on the agenda for them. <laughs>